Oh, great. What's the matter? Here comes Mr. Mouth. The mood's about to change. Yeah. Your mood's changing right now. It's not changing. Well, he's a one-man crime spree. He's the thug from Brooklyn, New York. Well, I'll put your hand on your wallet now. Introducing first from the Red Hook section of Brooklyn, New York, weighing 248 pounds. Trying to pickpocket somebody. Well, it seems to me like Taz is getting a little bit cocky, a little bit big for his britches the last couple of weeks. Uh oh. Is Taz headed this way? Oh, -ho. what does he want now? I can. See? Now, see? This, this guy, Taz, he knows his stuff. Uh, come on, you got to be able to take constructive criticism in this business. I can take constructive criticism as much as the next guy, but him telling me to listen to you, please! Okay, coach, let's look at it this way. Between the two of us, one of us is a legend. Who should listen to who? Okay. He forgot to put in his own mind. Okay. Uh oh, another bad Godzilla movie coming up. You, American thug, you have scary looks, you have crazy accent, but can you fight? You must know our teacher taught us well. Prepare to die! He does have scary looks. Indeed. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Fanaki doesn't say much, but he makes a point when he says something, doesn't he? And Taz seems amused by all this. Nevertheless, you can never discount the athletic ability of Taka Michinoku inside that squared circle, a former WWF light heavyweight champion. Well, certainly, we've seen him go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, some of the best. You remember Triple the, H one oh, time. Oh. That was a tremendous match in the year 2000. I, as a matter of fact, I think Taka probably relishes the idea of being the underdog in the yeah. match. You know, speaking of the year 2000 real quick, not to relish uh, or dwell on it, but what a year the year 2000 was. Can 2001 top it here in the World Wrestling Federation? Oh. I don't know, but uh, I'm sure willing to find out. Oh, certainly. I love being along for the ride. I'll so. tell you what. I, Steve Austin, Stephanie McMahon Helmsley, there's a little trouble brewing there. Well, certainly. You know, Steve Austin came out on SmackDown. Oh, oh wow. What a nice move by, by Taz taking it to the arm of Taka. Steve Austin didn't demand. He asked for a title shot from Stephanie. Stephanie declined, and then... Stone Cold being the gentleman that he is said, well, there's no reason, there's, there shouldn't be any hard feelings, so there's no reason why we shouldn't drink a beer together. Then he toasted Stephanie. She disrespected him by not drinking the beer. Then and only then did Stone Cold pour the beer on top, on top of Stephanie's head. Okay, now for the correct version, ladies and gentlemen. Stone Cold Steve Austin came out and said he wasn't playing any more games. And he wasn't going to wrestle her silly little matches unless he got a WWF title shot. Which he deserved. This is not a press. Yeah, but so does The Rock, oh, so wow. does The Undertaker, so does Rikishi. You can't let the uh, inmates run the asylum, so to speak. And Stone Cold. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wow, what a snap suplex by Taz. While toasting Stephanie McMahon Helmsley, forcefully oh, put boy. the two beer cans together so beer spilt on Stephanie. Simple mistake, simple mistake. But I tell you what, Stephanie came out later on in SmackDown, and what was supposed to be a handicap match it was. Well, you know what I'm talking about. It was The Rock and The Undertaker supposed to take on Rikishi. Well, out come a, out comes a beer drenched Stephanie. Here's a roll up, nice sunset flip, and a kick out by Taz. And she added William Regal and Kane to the mix in the corner of Rikishi. Obviously, not happy about the events of the night on SmackDown. Well. I agree with you. I I think The Rock and The Undertaker felt the wrath of Stephanie because of Stone Cold Steve Austin. It was the rattlesnake's fault. And if Rock and Taker are looking for a culprit, somebody well, to blame, look no further than The Rattlesnake, who's only in it for himself. He has no friends, wants no friends, never will have friends. You know, talking about the oh, oh, wow. T-Bone. Wait a second. Taz has Taka set up for the T-Bone suplex. Wow, what torque. But you talk about Mr. McMahon, what do you think was going through his mind? Eventually, he got to see. I don't know if he's watching that night, but he has seen what Stone Cold has done. And we know the past, the vicious past, that Mr. McMahon and Stone Cold Steve Austin have had. And after seeing that, 
it all could come back again. Well, I think the last time we saw Mr. McMahon, the last two oh. times, oh, nice by Taka. Good Savat kick. Mr. McMahon. Oh, pretty... wait a second. Taka with the back look. Nobody else. Oh, wait a second. Taz has it. Taz mission sunk in. Taz has sunk in the Taz mission. And this one, as quickly as it started, is now over. What I started to say is Mr. McMahon granted Austin his wishes a couple of weeks ago, hence giving uh, Austin the match with Kane. I don't know if Mr. McMahon will be that nice when he returns. I don't know what he's saying. Does the VO guy have the same agent that Taka's VO guy does? Oh, you have made it clear. Just another victim. So you think. But Confucius say, if your future is so bright, why you wear shades? <laughs> <laughs> Did, did we miss a cocktail party or a happy hour or something? That we, if we did, I'm not happy about it. No, whatever. Taz with the victory. Well, plenty more. Still to come.